Hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you doing this morning? Um, I know it's a little gray outside, but I hope you are awake and you're happy and you are ready for another Foundation Kids Art Corner. I am pumped for today's lesson. It is a fun, colorful lesson. It's going to take a little work, but I promise when you're done with it, you're going to love it. Today, we're going to look at the artist Heather Galler. Now, Heather Galler is a folk artist. Now, what that means is she makes art that is relevant to her culture, right? So all of us grow up in different homes and are raised in different ways, and we all have pieces that we call our culture. So she pulls in her culture to make her art, and she does landscapes and murals and these really beautiful floral paintings. Um, and so that's what we're going to look at today. We have some amazing artworks by her to show you guys. So this is one of her pieces. Um, as you can tell, it's bright colors. Colors. She also has the contrast of the black and white, the bottom half. Um, her flowers are full of shapes and colors. We got a few other ones that we're going to show you. Here's another one. And so you see that this one doesn't have that black and white contrast, but that pot has lots of shapes. I wonder how many different shapes can you see in this picture? Go ahead. You can comment those. Uh, I'm going to count out the shapes in this photo. Let's see what we can see. Uh, there is a square. Oh, I see some circles. Ooh, I see some rectangles for the stems. Um, I see some semicircles, which is half a circle, right? And what bright colors can you see? Go ahead, comment what colors you can see in here. Let me know what your favorite color is, um, which one of those paintings you like the best. I would love to know. So Helen Galler, like I said, is a folk artist, and she paints really big paintings sometimes, which are called murals or just regular size paintings. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to mimic one of her, those paintings of the flowers. So I have here uh, my finished copy of my one that I've done before, and so I have my vase and my flowers and my checkerboard bottom um, and we're going to go through this step by step to see um, you know how to make this all right so you guys ready put this aside so you need your big piece of paper and remember we talk about landscape and portrait so landscape is when it's like this right and portrait is when it's up and down so if it's vertical it's nice and tall that is portrait and this is landscape now looking at those uh pictures that we have of hers, do you think she did a lot of hers in landscape or portrait? What do you think? Comment, let me know. Do you think she did a bunch of them landscape or portrait for those flowers? She did a bunch of them in portrait. So that's what we're going to do ours in today. And so my stand's a little small, so i got to work in some sections. But you're going to want to grab a pencil. I'm going to grab a marker so you can see it on the screen. But you want to always draw and sketch in pencil first. That always makes it better. So I'm going to start off with the flowers. And so when you're looking at our piece of paper, so we have our portrait, right? It's nice, tall, and skinny. We want the flowers to go up on this top part, and so you want to make sure that when you're drawing them, you're working from the middle of the paper and up. You don't want to draw them too close to the bottom or else your vase is going to be teeny, 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 tiny. So sometimes to help myself not go too far down the paper, I like to put my hand kind of where I don't want to go past, and that's kind of like my line of like, do not cross. So we're going to start off by drawing our first flower. So I'm going to... Do a circle, and you can see here in the top corner of the screen her example, so you can look at some of hers too. And she does layers, right? So I'm going to do some of these. And then I'm going to do another circle around that one. All right, there's my first flower. I'm going to do another one maybe over here. I'm going to do a circle and another circle. This one, I'm going to draw out some lines, right? And then maybe around here, I'm going to go like this, you know? And then, so you see here, I'm running out of space. That's okay, because you can just take your line off the paper. Make sure not to draw on the table, but you just draw it like it's falling off the page. And that's great. It means that you're filling your space, and your picture's going to have such great depth when you do that. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to draw another one maybe down here start I'm gonna do this first let's come in and do the flower I'm gonna do a circle around it I'm gonna do a bigger circle around it 
And then I'm going to do one more circle. Now for this circle, I'm going to draw it behind my other two flowers. And so that flower is overlapping. And I'm going to draw some lines on this one too. Boom. All right. I'm going to draw one more here at the top. Let's see. I'm going to start with a circle. Go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do squeakleys around this one. All right. So I have four flowers. They're all different. With some of the space in between, uh, I'm going to draw some leaves for the flowers. Like maybe this one had one that was coming this way. Maybe I'll draw a big one out this way to fill some of that space. Um, what is your favorite flower? I'm very curious. I love daisies. Today I'm wearing daisy earrings. Um, so I love daisies and sunflowers. Anything that makes a room bright and happy. Which I think all flowers do that. So let's do one more leaf over here. Boom. Boom. All right, now remember what I said about how we made sure to draw ours towards the top of the paper. I mean, we put our arm here. You see, this flower went a little low, but that's okay because we're going to draw our vase. And for my vase, I'm going to have this flower overlap the vase. So my vase is going to start up here. I'm going to draw a line down, straight line down. And my vase is going to start here too, but right, I'm not going to draw that line until I get to here. I'm going to draw it down. Now, I did two straight lines. They're diagonal, but they're straight. We want them to kind of even up down here. And for the bottom of our vase, we're going to curve it because it's a 3D shape. So you really want it to take up the space. So we're going to take those lines, and I'm going to curve that bottom line. Now, that's my vase. Now, the vase is sitting on something, as always, right? And so you've got to show that in your art. You can't just have a gap between it or have nothing back there. It looks like your vase is just floating in thin air, and we don't want that. We want our vase sitting on a table or a floor or some type of surface. So to make sure you see that in your artwork, you're going to draw the horizon line, right? It's that line um, where typically if you're drawing a landscape, it's where the sky meets the land. We've talked about this before, but so if it still life or an indoor thing. It's maybe where your table meets the wall or your floor meets the wall. And so I'm going to draw that line. And I'm not going to draw it right here at the bottom, right? If I drew it right at the bottom of the vase, the vase would still kind of look like it's floating. So I'm going to draw it, and it's going to just go a little behind, right? Then it really looks like it's sitting on the table, and it's not floating in the air. It's not just on a wall. So we got our table, our wall, our flowers, and our vase. I'm going to draw some lines. So uh, Heather did some great work for her vases where she had lines and stripes, and so I really like that. So I'm going to mimic that in mine, and I'm going to just draw some curved lines as well. Remember, we curve them because the vase is 3D. It's, it's a big object, right? We want to convey that. And so if we drew straight lines, it would make it look more 2D. So we want it 3D, so we're going to curve those lines. Um, and then same with this floor. She did some stripes on the floor. So I'm going to go ahead, draw some stripes. And I'm actually going to make my stripes into checkerboards. I'm going to have just a line across. All right, so this is coming along. What you want to do with your black marker is you want to color in some of those. So we want that contrast between the black and white and then the super colorful. So I'm not going to do this whole thing just so we don't take up a ton of time. But I'm going to show you. As you fill in your vase, if you have a marker, you want to first go along the edge, kind of using that tip of the marker to get close to those lines. But then when you go to fill in, you want to use the side of your marker. It will fill in so much faster, and then you won't wear down the tip of your marker. Right? So a lot of times I see kids come with the tips, and they want to color the whole thing like that. It's going to take a lot longer, and then you're not going to have a pointy tip on your marker anymore. And that's going to be really sad when you want to do some details. So you want to just get around the edges with the tip, and then use the side of that marker to really fill in the space. And then same down here with the checkerboard. The side of that marker is your friend to fill in spaces. All right. 
Now, remember, we don't use markers or Sharpies or anything like that without asking someone in the house who's older than you, if you can, or for help. Because Sharpies are permanent, so you definitely don't want to use them without asking for help. So, all right, so you're going to color them in, right? This one would be black, too, because we do stripes. This one would be black. And then we get up here to our flowers. Now, if you have oil pastels at home, this would be the perfect time to pull those out. If you don't, you can use crayons. I'm going to use some oil pastels. I got these off of Amazon. They're fluorescent ones, so they're very bright. Um, but I love them. They're some of my favorite oil pastels. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start coloring in some parts of the flower. Um, not every single part, but just some parts. Look at that bright pink. Right. Maybe I'll make another line there so we have a pattern. Do you know what a pattern is? I bet you do. Go ahead, comment, and tell me what a pattern is. I'd love to hear your explanation of a pattern. So there's that. All right, you're going to take these crayons, these oil pastels, whatever you got, and you're just going to fill in some of it. You're not going to color all the flowers all in oil pastel, just some parts. The other parts, we're going to come back in and paint. That way we have mixed media is what we call that. And so you're using, you know, markers and pencils and crayons and paint. Those are all different medias. And so you'll have a very mixed media piece of art. Color this. All right, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to leave some blank to come back in and color with paint. Uh, let's do this guy up here. Now, for our background, right, so not our table, but our background, we are going to take that crayon or that oil pastel. Let's see, I'm going to do this lime green. And you want to draw something in your background. Now, for your background, you're going to draw it, and then we're going to paint over it. Now, the cool thing is about oil pastels and crayons is that they resist the watercolor. Right, so when you draw them, the watercolor goes over top and it doesn't cover it. It resists. So uh, I'm just going to draw some lines. I'm going to go from top to bottom. They don't have to be perfect. Right, they're wiggly, they're squiggly. That is okay. It's your art. You make it however you want. If you want them to be perfect lines, you want to go ahead and grab a ruler to help you for that part, for sure. So draw these lines. Boom. Ooh. It works a lot better if you have a table that fits your piece of paper. So there are my lines. And then I'm going to come in with some watercolors. So I bought these ones also from Amazon. They're a neon pack. Like I said, bright colors are the best. So let's see. Uh, maybe for my background, if I do the orange over the green, you see how that's kind of resisting that paint or that oil pastel. All right, and then you can come in, and you really want to make sure you clean your brushes, right? You always want to clean your brush in between each time. Have a paper towel, some water, so that you can get fresh colors and not muddied colors. Uh, now, when you're painting with watercolors, you also want to be very mindful of how they look. If I start painting with them and it's very streaky, that means I need more water. If it's not flowing like this where I can push it around and paint, it needs more water. Now, you can always have too much water. So if you start painting with it and it's very light and you can't really see the paint that well, that means that you need less water. But typically, most times I see kids, when they do it, they always need, they need more water. They tend to underuse water. So I'm going to come in, right, we're just going to paint these. And so you want to fill your whole thing with paint and oil pastels, but we're going to leave the vase and the floor kind of black and white. I'm going to hold back up my original one too so you can see the finished product. All right, so here is the finished product once you have it all in there. Right, you got bright colors, you got your stripes, your lines, and that is your he he blah, blah, blah. Heather, is her name. He wanted to say Helen. It's Heather Galler. 
um, inspired piece of artwork. I can't wait to see yours. I'd love for you to share it on Facebook or Instagram. You can tag Foundation Noonan and show us your wonderful pieces of artwork. We can't wait to see you guys. Bye.